what is plastic and what are the classifications of plastic this is the more important topic needs to understand for the plastic design engineers and the mold design engineers my name is Jagdish Atore and in this video I am going to provide you the information about the plastic and its classification do subscribe like and share the video and press the bell icon so that you never miss any new learning video from the design gigs without any further delay let's deep dive into the topic what is plastics basically the plastics are synthetic materials called polymers which are long chain molecules made up of repeating units which is the combination of hydrogen oxygen carbon silicon chlorine fluorine and sulfur which are joined together and they form a polymer chain so here these are the monomers that binding to the other monomers and they are forming the polymer chain so this polymer is a chemical compound with the molecules bonded together in a long repeating chains and because of the structure these polymers have unique properties that can be tailored for the different uses and that's the beauty of plastics that means we can customize the plastics as per our requirement or as per the function and application requirement and as more repeating units like this they added the plastic molecular weight increases and addition of these repeating units to the chain makes the plastic heavier and plastics are moldable when in liquid state or you can say upon heating they are moldable but they exist in a solid state in their finished condition and these plastics are popular because of the low weight or the good strength to weight ratio when you know, we reinforce that and they are having comparatively lower cost now here these monomers are getting converted into the polymer through the process known as polymerization process so this monomer is a small molecule and it is a molecule that forms a basic unit for the polymers and these monomers bind to the other monomers to form a repeating chain like this through the process known as polymerization process the next is classification of plastics how these plastics are classified in the plastic we have crystalline thermoplastic reinforcement some thermosetting plastic amorphous materials some elastomers so the plastics or the polymer is classified as thermosetting plastics thermoplastics and the elastomer this plastic is known as polymer that's why intentionally i mentioned the name as polymer in the bracket and this polymer is classified as thermosetting thermoplastic and elastomer now in the semi crystalline and amorphous format they are having this structure and in the melt condition both crystalline and the amorphous will have the same structure because they will be in a melton or molten state but in the solid state this crystals of crystalline structure will have this structure and the amorphous will have the linear structure so this is like the three network structure for the crystalline material and for amorphous it will be linear material so basically these elastomers are rubbers and there are special polymers that have very elastic property so they are lightly cross linked and amorphous with the glass transition temperature well below the room temperature for this elastomer the intramolecular force between that polymer chains are rather weak and this cross link completely suppress that irreversible flow but the chains are very flexible so this elastomer shows the ductile and brittle property both they are flexible so these chains are very flexible at the temperature above the glass transition temperature and a small force if you are applying on the elastic or any elastomer so that small force leads to a large deformation so these elastomers have low young modulus and they have very high elongation at a break uh, when compared with the other uh, polymers or other polymer material and these elastomers are interchangeably called as rubber they can be classified into dyne elastomer non dyne elastomer and the thermoplastic elastomer so basically these dyne elastomers are polymerized from monomers uh, containing two sequential double bonds that is dyne elastomers like uh, the polyisoprene or polybutadiene and the polychloroprene 
and this non dyne elastomers it includes butyl rubber or polyisobutylene mm -hmm. or some silicon rubber polyurethane that is the spandex and the fluoroelastomers and these non dyne elastomers have no double bond the dyne elastomers are double bond but this non dyne elastomers they don't have a double bonds in the structure and then the cross linking requires other methods than the vulcanization so with some addition of trifunctional monomers that is condensation polymer or addition of divinyl monomers that is the free radical polymerization process we can make this non dyne elastomer other than vulcanization process so the condensation polymerization or the free radical polymerization process we can make this non dyne elastomers and this like having the small amount of dyne monomers like butadiene so this shows the good properties and then tpe that is thermoplastic elastomer it is named as tpe and in the short form so that is thermoplastic elastomer so this is elastomeric material such as sis and sbs block copolymers and certain urethanes that are like thermoplastics and contains hard that means rigid and the rubbery units so when cool from your melt state to a temperature below the glass transition temperature the hard block plastics for this elastomer they separate to form a rigid domains that act as a physical cross link for the your elastomeric blocks so they are having the both the property of thermoplastics and thermosetting so they are rubber material then the other form which is like other classification as crystalline structure and amorphous structure so basically this crystalline structure polymers they are arranged in a ordered fashion if you observe here for this molecules so this space between that atom is uniform between these atoms and this atom so what are the space we are having that space is uniform as they are having order fashion and the uniform space between these atoms that indicates they are having a high intramolecular force and as they are having the high intramolecular force so while deforming them or while melting them we need to provide the high temperature to break that intramolecular force so this crystalline structure polymers are considered as a high temperature performance plastics because we require the high temperature to break that intramolecular force now the example for this crystalline structure polymers the few examples are polyethylene polypropylene polyethylene tereptalate polybutylene tereptalate polyether ether ketone or simply polyketone material these are few examples of crystalline structure polymers then on the other hand we have amorphous material or amorphous structure this amorphous means shapeless or without shape or you can say without form that we can call as amorphous material for this amorphous material if you observe and if you compare that with the crystalline structure you will notice that for the amorphous material so the space between the atom is not uniform here the space is less here the space is more again the here the space is more so for amorphous structure material the space between the atom is not uniform and that indicates the low intramolecular force so with the less temperature we will be able to break that intramolecular force and these amorphous structure polymers are flexible and they are elastic now the example for this amorphous structure plastics are pmma that is polymer methyl methacrylate hips high impact polystyrene polycarbonate abs acrylonitrile butadiene styrene and the pvc polyvinyl chloride so these are few examples of amorphous structure plastics now these plastics are classified based on the structure also the crystalline structure polymers and the amorphous structure polymers classification of thermoplastics or classification of plastics so basically the plastic is classified into thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics so for thermoplastics they consist long chain of linear polymer the structure is linear for the thermoplastics the structure is like this a b and c they are linear structure on the other hand for thermosetting they exist in a 3d network structure so the structure is cross link for the thermosetting plastics and this cross link structure network structure restrict the movement or you can say they retain the structure now for thermoplastics the binding forces between the chain that could be easily broken upon the use of heat pressure or both so by applying the heat we can deform that by applying the pressure also we can deform that or by applying both we can deform that 
Hence, the material could easily flow and soften in a heated condition that is for thermoplastic. But on the other hand, for thermosetting plastics, this cross link retains the strength even upon the usage of heat. Hence, the material won't soften upon heating. Once it takes the shape, it won't soften upon heating. So, we will not be able to recycle that, and that's the reason why the thermosetting plastics are non recyclable. Then, the material could be reshaped upon heating. Hence, it could be reused. So that means the thermoplastic material can be reused. And for thermosetting plastic, the material maintains its shape and structure even upon the heating. So it can't be softened and it can't be reused. And thermoplastic materials are soft, weak, and less brittle. And the thermosetting plastics are hard, strong, and more brittle. For the structural applications, where it is required to have the high strength, so a hard material and the strong material, so in that cases we can select the thermosetting. And for the normal application, you can use the thermoplastic material. The thermoplastic material could be reclaimed from the vestige, that means they can be recycled, and the thermosetting plastics cannot be reclaimed from the vestige, they are non recyclable. The example for the thermoplastics are like polypropylene, acetal, that is polyoxymethylene, nylon, or polyamide, then ABS, polycarbonate, and the polyvinyl chloride. So these are a few examples of thermoplastics and the example for the thermosetting plastics are epoxy, polyesters, polyurethane, bakelite, melamine, melamine formaldehyde or phenol formaldehyde. These are the few examples of thermosetting plastics.